So you're saying, oh, I've dealt with that, but, but the lower back pain is saying, no, you have not dealt with that. Right? So quite often that's happening. With our, in our lives, right? We're saying to ourselves, I've dealt with that, I've dealt with this, I've dealt with that. But the law of attraction doesn't apply to you. Right? God's laws are perfect. <laughs> Completely perfect. Alright? Alright, All right, let's look at it. So, fear leads me to truth. Can you see why I must learn to love my fear? <laughs> my fear is my pathway back to truth. You see that? Like every single thing I'm afraid of is actually what I need to learn. So there's something in there every single time. Every single thing I'm afraid of. But what we often do is we live in this fear. So what happens is we, we in this state of fear, we get into this panic and we live in the panic. We actually make decisions based around the panic, nursing the panic, cotton wooling the panic, making sure that everything in our lives conforms so that we don't feel that panic. Right? And that is not leading us back to truth then. All we're doing is we're staying locked up in a state that is never ever going to change until we confront it and see the truth. And that is that if we feel the fear and go what's underneath it and feel the emotions underneath it, it'll lead us back home. So I think of truth, like divine truth is my home. Right? That's where I want to live. Right. There's two truths. There's that truth, which is the truth of your pain, but then there's also the God's perspective of that truth. Is it? I'm only talking about God's perspective of the truth. Okay. Yeah. And that is going to firstly require your personal truth. And we'll talk tomorrow about the difference between personal truth and God's truth. Right? But in, we're not talking about this truth, I'm talking about God's truth. Okay. Alright? All fear, everything is a result of me not accepting God's truth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not my own truth. But accepting my own truth is a part of the process. Yeah. Yeah. But understand, all of us here are in a state of error. Are, are we not? Mm -hmm. right? Do you know everything about that God knows? Mm -hmm. Obviously not. I don't. So then I'm in a state of error at some point, aren't I? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so well, how do we get from this place to that place? By firstly confronting my own errors. Mm -hmm. And then also coming to accept God's truths. That's the only way that we can get home. So the other thing about fear, the other things about fear is that when you work through this, this what we see as a problem, but is actually our friend, right? Once we work through these feelings from our friend, we will learn some some qualities that are very, very important in our progression. One of them is courage. Right? Most of us have a tendency to avoid situations where courage is required emotionally. So I'm not talking about physical courage, although that's part of it. I'm talking about having the courage to experience and know everything inside of you. Having the courage to face that. That's what God is going to require of you, in fact. He's going to require that of you. Right? The other thing that it builds is this quality called faith. Faith is seeing things in the future right, that nobody else can really see. Our, the Apostle Paul said uh, it's the assured expectation of the things hoped for. What that means is that I, can, I, I hope for things in the future and I know for certain in my heart that I'm going to realise them. Now the reason why that's a very important quality in dealing with your fear is that when we're in this state of fear and living in this state of fear, we do not see anything outside that fear generally. We don't see the bliss that we could be living in. right? We don't see how beautiful our life could be. And it's only by having faith or building faith that we begin to see how beautiful our life can be. And faith is a necessary requirement of you dealing with your emotions because there are some times when you're dealing with your emotions that you're going to feel so bad and you're going to feel so alone and so distraught and so hopeless that it's only your faith that is going to keep you emotionally processing. Nobody inside of you will keep you doing it. It will only be your faith, whatever it has. And so facing fears 
And embrace, learning to embrace them actually builds that quality of faith. And there will be a time where faith turns into reality when you do that. So when you make the transition between the seventh and the eighth sphere, you will no longer have an assured expectation of things hoped for. You will at that time know for certain because you've experienced it. You follow me? So right at the moment, everything I'm saying to you, many of you are going, hmm, that's interesting, hmm, that's interesting. Well, that's not so interesting, well, I don't like that. But, you know, you're having this decision-making process going through your mind, right? And you're wanting to put some of those things into actions. There will come a time when you look back on all of this and you'll see the full truth of it and you'll know it in your heart because you've personally experienced it. That's when faith turns into reality for you. That's when the truth has become real. And it's your fear that is your friend leading you back to that place. Because everything you fear right now is, in fact, there is, in fact, a truth associated with it that you're not accepting right now. 